السلام علیکم ویلکم ایوری ون آن بورڈ از دس ڈاکٹر طاہر طاہر اکبر جی ذیشان بھائی السلام علیکم سر ہاؤ ار یو ویلکم آن بورڈ سم آف دا پیپل ہو ڈونٹ نو اباؤٹ ڈاکٹر طاہر ہی از آور سینئر ہی از ورکنگ یو اے ای اینڈ دس دس ورژن آف زوم از گفٹیڈ ٹو اس بائی ڈاکٹر طاہر تو تھینکس الاٹ ڈاکٹر طاہر فار یور Uh, unconditional support um uh, actually you know on a on a funny note i was just trying to search nora in uh, google so then i came to know there are so many people with this name not only for anesthesia for models i i found a uh, indian uh, canadian origin uh model with name of nora so so anyways uh, so actually uh, we discussed some uh, some of the aspects uh, of uh, non operating room uh, anesthesia some of the points were missing and uh, i will start my discussion with today with a with a like uh, with a question uh, that which it was asked to me in actually uh, saudi saudi arabian consultant evaluation exam and uh, it was uh, like a little bit challenging not 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 to challenge but this this sort of question was not asked before a patient with acute mi like 5 uh, 6 days ago okay and now presented with acute limb ischemia okay acute limb ischemia so uh, like uh, first of all what should you do will you proceed or will you cancel this case or what will you do any any answer from from any one of you shakil would you like to answer any answers please um okay so actually the point in this case will be that you have a patient with acute mi so that is a high risk cardiac condition because this patient will have, will be at risk of reinfarction so it's a active cardiac condition or you can say uh, like a, a major cardiac predictor in different books you will find a different word for it okay so this is one thing but you have now acute limb ischemia so this patient cannot be delayed okay so you need to operate it so the consideration in this patient will be that with that will be a high risk surgery so you should take the high risk consent for any uh, cardiovascular morbidity mortality icu okay uh, and uh, because you cannot delay it because if you delay it there will be limb ischemia or even loss of the limb okay so you have to do it so majority of times they are doing it as a endovascular procedure okay so for endovascular procedure actually sometimes they can do it in the local with local infiltration with uh, some sedation okay so but you will do the all prerequisites like maybe you can uh, have in in addition to standard word standard to monitoring you will have invasive cardiac monitoring okay um, maybe this patient will be already in icu post mi or shifted to ccu so so these things may, but one after one week if the patient already has been stunted maybe the risk factor has been reduced a little bit so you will find this patient in uh, interventional radiology suit for endovascular procedure okay so what will be the what will be the consideration in this patient so all the consideration with reference to nora okay and in uh, because this patient will have will be receiving therapeutic anticoagulation as well as uh, like antiplatelets so the, you cannot give any central axial block so it will be contraindicated in this patient and even if you if you are uh, like maybe th this will be a, a little bit of uh, local infiltration and they can proceed with it but intraoperatively there may be any vascular 
uh, rupture okay so patient can have sudden uh, bleeding in this patient especially you need to maintain a good hemoglobin okay as a big biggest factor and you will try to reduce a sympathetic uh, stimulation like uh, like you will reduce the cardiac risks okay so the all the factors which increase oxygen demand by the heart you will try to reduce them okay and you will try to um, like uh, avoid the sympathetic stress and good my best friends like oxygen co2 volume pressure okay and temperature these are considered to be the and uh, vital organs perfusion pressure so this will be your actually this is this is target for a good anesthesia avoid hypoxia avoid hyper or hypocarbia avoid hyper or hypovolemia uh, avoid uh, high blood pressures or low blood pressures avoid hypothermia especially in hypothermia as well and vital organ perfusion like heart and uh, brain okay kidneys so you just maintain uh, an adequate perfusion pressure nora non operating room anesthesia okay non operating room anesthesia someone asked this question non operating room anesthesia it's nora okay yes so um, these are the factors which you should be considering and um, like, uh, of course, there will be chances of reinfarction. So maybe you can have a cardiologist on board. Okay. That, that in case this patient needs some immediate cardiac intervention, you should be ready for it. If there is, if there is a possibility, you can monitor through uh, T. Okay. If possible, you can monitor this patient. Uh, you, you 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 can you can consider not of because the patient will be if you are doing it under local anesthesia maybe it will not be needed but this may be a, a predictor of uh, any any problem and especially if you are giving general anesthesia for example this patient they are not able to do it as endovascular and they want to try to, to want to do it open so you should you should have in in your mind that you have to reduce the stress and all the factors which I told which to maintain the the, the adequate perfusion pressure and reduce the load on the heart okay so this will this should be in your mind and um, so uh, this is with reference to the scenario which i other endovascular procedures in actually neuro radiology suit okay with the, some acute management of acute stroke okay aneurysms and uh, some AV malformations. So, uh, an acute stroke, it is, you can say it, it is just like, just like we do it in acute MI, okay? So, in acute MI, when there is, uh, the patient uh, is, uh, is a candidate of having immediate, uh, like, um, uh, vascular intervention. So, immediately, they, they, they take the patient to, uh, this uh, cardiology suit and they do the uh, angioplasty or angio and placement of stunts accordingly. So just like in, in that patient, you can have reinfarction uh, in, in uh, this, cardio, uh, this cardiac suit. Okay. So echo lab. So uh, like um, uh, reinfarction. Then arrhythmias. Like uh, I remember uh, about 10 years ago, I was working for the first time in cath lab and patient suddenly went into VFib and I was I, I, I was so terrified. I didn't know what to do. But actually, because they are being done by them, so actually they are themselves shocking the patient. So we are gi just giving monitored anesthesia care. So, But this is the problem which you can face. Patient suddenly can go in hypotension. Okay. So these are the things which you feel face in the cath lab. Almost similar problems you can face here. 
the car like if the patient is uh, with delayed like a decreased level of consciousness you might need to intubate the patient maybe they are doing it under uh, the same as i told you that usually they these procedures may be done in monitored anesthesia care and you actually don't need anesthesia but if if the conscious level is deteriorated or any in this uh, with reference to neuroradiology patient can have fits okay so you should be ready to manage uh, fits decreased level of consciousness and any uh, like uh, uh, problems associated with increased uh, intracranial pressure. Okay. So you should be think, uh, considering if you are giving general anesthesia there, then the same factors which can affect the ICB. So you have to maintain the CO2, you have to maintain the O2, you have to maintain the same factor which I told you almost. And the other point you should be telling the cerebral perfusion pressure. Okay. So you have to maintain cerebral perfusion pressure in a good level so that uh, there is no no more uh, like uh, ischemia. So these are the things which you will be facing in uh, neuroradiology with, re with reference to acute stroke management. Okay, these AV malformations and some procedures they uh, I have limited experience about it, but uh, recently in our hospital they used to use some glue. Okay, for AV malformation and the way they introduced the glue, actually it resulted in sudden cardiac arrest. Okay, so we have this, one of them was revived and one of them unfortunately wasn't revived. So we had in last uh, four or five months, we had two incidents with the same uh, team uh, and they are still trying to find the cause but usually this was the with reference to the amount of material they are using okay so unfortunately in this these cases either you are in interventional radiology whether in neuro or cath lab actually the problem is that you don't know what they are doing unfortunately because not we are not expert in the radiological uh, inter, uh, uh, interpretation and sometimes you don't know what they are doing where they are because you are just seeing a picture with dye going in dye going out and actually you don't know what's going on so it is very important if it is possible for you to take uh, to be on board with the with the interventionist what they are doing okay so it is better maybe because if you can anticipate but unfortunately, sometimes uh, usually the surgeons or these interventionists, they don't uh, keep a closed loop communication so that you know you are, or you anticipate what can happen. So in this, like, like in any other NORA scenario, you will have uh, less uh, manpower you, in unfamiliar environment. Sometimes you are not able. Another important point with reference to intervention radiology uh, is that usually the table is straight. So in many scenarios, you you will the patient if is general if having general anesthesia, maybe it is easy to uh, uh, manage. But if you are this patient is uh, uh, like not under general anesthesia and straight, so sometimes patient can be short of breath. Okay, because there is no way you can make the 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 reverse Trendelenburg or head up or head down. So this is a big problem. And they are if you have given given general anesthesia. The problem is that you need to have ex, uh, adequate length of the circuit because sometimes they are moving away, up, up, down, uh, away from the uh, the machine, uh, towards the machine. So you should be, uh, you should. This this is a very important point. And then of course the radiation hazard will be there because they are using the the image intensifier. So the radiation hazard will will be there for the whole of the staff. So this, these are the very important things you should be uh, considering, like in MRI, but a little different with MRI because you you will be there inside uh, and you you can uh, you can have access to the patient. But again, the environment is very strange. Sometimes they have big uh, machines all over there, and you are you are not finding. Sometimes you are captured there. You are not able to move freely. So this is the uh, the problem which you have in interventional radiology suit. Okay. So similarly, the, as I as I told you about neuro procedures, cardiac procedures, okay, then the vascular, like uh, any other vascular, like because before they used to have this uh, 
like femoro femoral or popliteal femoro popliteal bypass in in as the in in the scenario which i told actually the the problem is that with the with the anesthesia what are the the things we should be knowing that sometimes the clot still can migrate so you can have pulmonary embolism you can have cardiac problems you so this you, this things should be in your mind then another important thing is that they are giving anticoagulants they are asking you to to give anticoagulants so you the, the patient can bleed even not only there patient can have bleeding like you are doing a interventional procedure with reference to uh, this one uh, in in the lower limb for example but they are giving anticoagulants maybe uh, any any problem can occur even in the brain you can have a stroke hemorrhagic stroke because of anticoagulants they are giving so it is it is it is possible okay so you should be ready maybe nothing happens but you should be ready for any any serious problem so it's very tricky uh, to to have to work in these places um, uh, so these this these are the challenges which they can house and then the money it is monitored anesthesia care okay so you you have limited choice of uh, things which you can of course you can use midazolam you can you can use uh, presidex uh, okay so but because you have to maintain the the conscious sedation because if you over sedate the patient then what will happen especially this occurs with midazolam because the patient will start moving unintentional movements so maybe it, sometime it becomes very challenging so if you have given a small dose of midazolam sometime patient is start sleeping and then unintentional movement is started sometime patient is moving so so this is a, a a big challenge to maintain a thorough uh, level of uh, like a level of anesthesia in which the 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 surgical that the, uh, the procedure which they are doing is not uh, interrupted and uh, like uh, overall the patient condition does not deteriorate okay and of course like in any other you should have very good access to the emergency medications and uh, things like that okay um uh, bhai, would you like to add something so i mean you have covered uh, most of the things so just uh, the 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 first point you made uh, about scenario yes the acute mi and uh, certain procedure so Link, just to remind I mean, them they are senior anesthetist our colleagues yes uh, but i mean just to remind there is no absolute contraindication for anesthesia. Sure. Remember this sentence. Because, you, have uh, to... you know, surgeons or some other specialities, they think that anesthetists have so many reasons to postpone the case. Hmm. And, of course, some of our colleagues have the habit to sometimes um, cancel the case. But in emergency situation, there is no absolute contraindication to anesthesia. What it depends on the situation. Is it life-saving or limb-saving? Then you have to go for it. And as Dr. Zishan explained very nicely, you know, specialities. Only one thing, yeah, most of the time it is uh, MAC, but you have to be ready to maintain the airway, either with the uh, bag mask ventilation for the short apnea situation, or LMA or intubation, whatever the situation, you can decide accordingly. Uh, only one um, exception is there for uh, you know stroke cases. Sometimes patient comes intubated, or they need you to intubate the patient before they start the procedure, because they are working in brain and they don't want any slight movement at that time. So again, it depends on the situation. So you can discuss, uh, you can evaluate the patient and discuss with the neuroradiologist. And then again, there is a debate that um, you should extubate the patient. Yes, they, they want the patient to be extubated in the radiology suite or cath lab because they want to assess the nervous system. But again, there is a debate. Then ICU people, they are not happy because they want uh, their monitoring and uh, they want to extubate uh, as per their you know assessment of the patient 
So this was the just because there is a study that if you intubate a stroke patient during the procedure, then there is a high mortality. So either intubate, discuss with the neuroradiologist, intubate in the beginning, okay? And then again, discuss in detail that they want extubation because again, intubation, extubation, both are stressful um, events. So if they want, really they want to extubate the patient in the suite or they should again um, extubate and reassess the patient in ICU. So yeah, that is was the only thing I wanted to uh, just really tell. otherwise it is uh, covered. Really thankful to you, Dr. Tahir. I ju uh, just, uh, the, the, the words which you say, I will just, uh, I just write some of them. So always we have to monitor risk versus benefit. And as Dr. Tahir said, there is no patient which is unfit for anesthesia. You just have to modify your technique, okay? So you have to be ready for any anticipated problems or unexpected problems. And so you should be ready for it. Like, like Dr. Tahir mentioned that airway management will be a challenging thing in between the procedure. If you are asked to do it, the access will be difficult. And exactly another problem is that reintubation. If you extubate and then you need to reintubation again, you will see the data that reintubation, the chances of complications and chances of morbidity, mortality are increased. Similarly, there will be cardiac, cardiovascular roller coaster effect. The suddenly there may be hypotension, there may be hypertension. So you should be ready for anything. So you need to have hemodynamic support. Mm -hmm. You might need to have central line and uh, 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 invasive monitoring. Actually, the problem is that maybe nothing happens, but anything can uh, occur. Uh, so that is the, the problem in such cases that you, you maybe you are relaxed. They are doing it under monitored anesthesia care. So it is very difficult to maintain the level of anesthesia. Number one, you can have any unexpected problem airway problem, cardiovascular problem, patient if move a little bit, whole of the procedure is destroyed. And the, they are, even if they are struggling, they will they will be uh, eating your brain more. So you, you have to decide accordingly and uh, you have to be right. ready for any, 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 uh, any. I'm sorry? Okay, so I, I hope we have uh, discussed the chunk of uh, 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 points about uh, this case. Just a second. Few few things with reference to... Um, uh, just a second, please. Um, Nora is always uh, a challenging thing and uh, you should be ready for any problem. I think we will... We we discussed about endoscopy. We discussed about MRI. We discussed about endo endoscopic uh, urological procedures. We discussed about dental procedures. So uh, like interventional cardiology, and of course, you know, because I'm just uh, just touching the topic, and I'm just telling you. Of course, the problem is that again, I will tell suggest you that whenever you are happening to to uh, to work in that environment. You should discuss with the surgeon. Ask, don't, don't, don't feel any uh, like embarrassment to ask what they want to do. You should be knowing what they are doing. Okay. So another because this is something advanced with the cardio, cardiac anesthesia. Uh, this uh, TAVI or TAVAR, this uh, percutaneous transcatheter aortic valve replacement. You can say this. These are the patients uh, which are actually for uh, open cardiac surgery. Sometimes they are doing it with the. Uh, cardiovascular intervention and again in these patients even the perfusionist the the cardiac surgeon uh, for all any like uh, they are re ready because maybe at any time they need to immediately put the lines and put uh, send the patient on uh, the pump because any complication can occur this is with reference to this uh, the cardiac problem because i was just lucky enough to work in two years in cardiac anesthesia so um, as a junior, so I was very like a flying bird. I don't have the responsibility, so I was just enjoying what the the surgeon and uh, consultant anesthesia used to do. So, uh, but I observed a lot of things, which was very difficult because you need to have ready uh, vasoconstrictors, vasodilators, and then you have to arrange in a way that they are going smoothly because this is the chunk of cardiac anesthesia. 
planning and arrange arrangement if you are in a mess if you arrange in between and then you the line was blocked and you flushed so maybe you suddenly you have a chunk of uh, like a, a big dose of vaso, vasopressor is going and then maybe in other surgeries we don't are we are not uh, uh, bothered by the surgeon but here the the surgeon will uh, eat suddenly will kill you because even uh, even you don't know what you have done uh, the immediately the heart will tell and immediately the cardiac surgeon will tell you what you are doing so these are the things which you should be uh, expecting in these cases so i think uh, that's what i wanted to share with you so thank you very much all of you for your presence tomorrow i was just planning because uh, next few days i will try to have uh, like some of the cases uh, for the for the candidates who are going for oral exam so um like to, today tomorrow i was just thinking to have a broad discussion about trauma how to to manage trauma patients okay so thank you very much all of you for your attendance especially dr tahir uh, inshallah we will meet again assalam alaikum warahmatullahi any any questions any suggestions any co comments are welcome okay bye bye assalam